Hello guys, today we are going to take a quick look at this malicious PowerShell command that was sent to me. Uh, this was encountered when the user opened a suspicious website and he faced a click fix attack. Uh, it is basically a social engineering technique that displays a fake error message, fake captcha, usually. And it looks pretty much like this. Okay, uh, we can see a fake error here that wants us to open Windows PowerShell with Windows Terminal, paste it in the window and press enter. This will pretty much run the command and we of course have no way of knowing uh, how the command works and what it does on our computer. So let's take a quick look at this. So let's take a look at it. Uh, it is starting PowerShell. This means that the user was most likely uh, instructed to paste this in uh, Windows R, pretty much the run dialog, this one, and not the PowerShell directly because uh, there's no other reason it would like directly invoke PowerShell like this. Command, of course, start process, another PowerShell with arguments. We have WH here. This is pretty much a shortcut for Windows style hidden. Uh, EPB, this pretty much uh, means that it will bypass the execution policy. Uh, execution policy is a pretty important thing on the systems to prevent from running uh, malicious PowerShell and uh, unknown PowerShell scripts in general. So this is pretty much bypassing that rule. IX, uh, this is pretty much shortcut for invoke expression. Uh, it means like a command. Uh, C, command, pretty much. IWR means invoke web request. This is a web request on this website. Uh, here we can see it starts hidden, completely hidden, not minimized. Uh, if it was minimized, it would pretty much look just like if I press this, I can open it again. But if it's Windows style hidden, it will run like completely in background and not we'll like not see it at all. Uh, we have here hashtag chrome.exe update. Uh, this is pretty much a note. So like the equivalent would be if we do just this, for example, this is not needed here. Okay, this is just to trick the user because if I open it in the run dialog, we can actually see that none of the malicious stuff will be seen and we'll only see the hash, fix and other stuff like that. Okay, so we opened the website we had in the command and the first thing we see here is uh, that it invokes a hidden uh, encoded command again. We're actually going to take a look at this a little bit later. Let's actually look at the full this script. Okay, we can see some function here. We can see another function. We can see some variables here and some other stuff. Uh, this is pretty interesting. We can see it uh, downloads two files. One is named uh, loomc2.exe which we can probably tell from the name that it is a Luma Stealer. And then we have a second one that's named font1.exe. I do not know what that is, and we're going to figure that out a little later again. Uh, it downloads them in a temp folder. Temp folder is, if you open Explorer and we type percent temp percent, I have the wrong keyboard layout, sorry for that. <coughs> Yes, this is pretty much our temp files. So, uh, quite an interesting thing is that it attempts to disable safe browsing and allow launching protocols from Origins for Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and Brave. And it also uses the GPU update slash force command to uh, make the policies like uh, take effect immediately. Uh, well, this is not uh, that big of a problem. It can be a pretty unwanted modification in my opinion. So let's actually take a look at the encoded command now. We can see it also launches it as hidden. So uh, the encoded string is in format UTF 16 LE. So if we search for base 64 decode, we use for example this website, and here we select the uh, UTF 16 LE, and we paste the base64 encoded string. We should pretty much see the. Yeah, exactly. So, this is basically an HTTP listener of post and get requests on the port 8187 in PowerShell. 
So this is pretty much to establish a command and control server. As you can see, it has an option to shut down and to stop the HTTP listener. While this is probably not the most dangerous payload, the dangerous payload itself are the two files it downloads. Uh, this is a pretty big issue as well. So uh, let's take a look at the two files that it downloads and executes. The first one, as I mentioned, is named lumc2.exe. And yes, it is a muscular indeed. The second one is named uh, fanti1.exe. We're going to take a deeper look at that one. Uh, it is on direct link from storej.share.io, which is pretty much a file hosting uh, website. And I already went ahead and uploaded both of these files on uh, any run. So this is our fanti1.exe. We can actually see it did not uh, do pretty much anything on the VM, nothing that could be considered as uh, unsafe, malicious or anything. But uh, if we take a quick look at the virus total, we can see it already has a few detections, uh, but it is pretty much by heuristic analyze. Uh, we can see it contacts this URL, which is most likely a command and control server, especially with the weird port. So if you take a look at it, we can see it has a bunch of malicious files contacting this website, and it also has a CSV named sectorrat.csv. Uh, this is actually a sample of sectorrat. We can see it by looking at IDS rules that it detected a sectorrat related activity. So yes, the URL is pretty much associated with this specific uh, backdoor. Uh, there's not much interesting stuff, only that it also grabs your cookies, login data, because we can see it in the files opened on VirusTotal. <coughs> yeah, nothing really much interesting here going on. The file is VM protected, uh, definitely, because otherwise it would just run on the any run VM, but it just did not. So let's take a look at the second file named lumc2.exe. Uh, what a surprise, it is a Lumus killer. Uh, we can see that it has its mutex has been identified. This is a specific mutex that a uh, Lumus killer has, and also uh, info stealing actions were detected from it. If you take a quick look at its virus total, this is actually a really fresh sample. Uh, we can see that the first upload was by me uh, two hours ago, and yeah, it has only three detections, which is uh, really bad. It's pretty much undetected by any uh, major AV. So, yes. How can you actually protect against this? Well, the first thing is not enter anything like in your terminal, PowerShell, Windows R dialog, or anything like that. We can see it has a request to a bunch of these malicious URLs, which have pretty high detection ratio. Uh, if we open the relations of it, we can see it has a bunch of other malicious files contacting it. Uh, this is pretty much the command and control server that it sends the passwords, logins, cookies, and everything to it. If we open any of the files, we can see some of them are packed, but most of them are detected as a Luma stealer, so we can pretty much confirm this is a, definitely a Luma stealer sample. Luma Stealer sample. Uh, another interesting thing is the mutex. Uh, the mutex is pretty much in every Luma sample. If we uh, scroll down here, just a bit more. Yes, we can see the decoded text uh, Luma C2. Mm, where is the mutex? Is it not here? Okay, it is actually not here currently, but. The other Lumus Dealer samples have like a mutex tab here, and this exact uh, mutex that was detected here will be also shown there. So yeah, this file pretty much uh, starts an HTTP listener on port 8187, uh, disables your safe browsing for three various browsers, then it downloads a backdoor in your PC, 
and it also downloads a uh, Luma Stealer that info steals uh, everything you have on your computer. Your saved uh, browser, passwords, logins, cookies, pretty much everything it can. Well, uh, thank you for watching. I think we covered pretty much everything important this malicious command could do, and I hope you learned something from it.